I do realize lots of people would object to this. A lot of uh, theoretical physicists would object to this, but um, you have to understand this concept and lots of uh, physicists really, really hate the concept of um, something which cannot be added or divided, multiplied or subtracted. Uh, they hate that because it doesn't make sense because it's not mathematical. And unfortunately, consciousness is not mathematical. Don't ever try to explain mathematically. You, you definitely get it wrong. Energy can be explained mathematically. Consciousness can't. Now, to understand how um, the interaction between energy and the way interaction between energy and consciousness work together, you should understand that energy is the space, right? And consciousness is the time. Now, how, how would I come to this conclusion? Okay, I'll explain it um, quite simply in the sense of uh, 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 CD. Now, a lot of us, we know what CDs are. Now, here I have a beautiful 90-minute, uh, um, uh, 70 80 minute uh, CD, uh, which has got beautiful uh, American Indian music on it. Anyways, this 90, this 70 minute CD is contained within here. Now, let's imagine this is space, right? This is the energy field of space, right? Now, for this space to realize what music it has, it needs something else to read it. Now, what does it have to read it? In the context of of a CD, we have a laser, right? And a laser is shot onto the CD because this CD, don't forget, has got um, perforated holes. So it's shot into the, um, a laser is shot into it, and as it goes right round it, it reads, and then a song comes out of it, right? And that is how we experience the eighty minutes, uh, the seven, the seventy minutes on this. On the CD. Now, in relation to energy, we have this, uh, this, uh, what do we call this, um, uh, this, uh, no field, but this space of energy. And what consciousness does, it rests on this, on this energy, like the way the laser would on the CD. And basically, it reads it, right? And it reads it, and it gets a rough understanding. Now, m my explanation of uh, time and in, in, in using the CD is very, very basic, right? It's very, very simplistic because it just means that, okay, fine, there's space, and then you've just got a CD just reading it, which is consciousness, which is just reading it. But what actually happens is that since this is the case, from the very point of singularity, at that point of singularity, energy was self-aware. And as energy became self-aware, it burst out into all that we see. And as we are going through life, as we see life, hear life, smell life, taste life, um, feel life, you know, in whatever form we have our lives in, we are just being aware, right? Whether you're consciously aware of it or subconsciously, it doesn't matter, you're still aware because you're alive. You're aware of your possibility of what you can be. And you're going through this space of energy, right? So that's just basically the basic uh, explanation of, of time.
time and space, meaning that space is energy, time, space is energy, and time is consciousness. So, how does this relate to time travel? Well, remember I said that everything we move, it, um, we are, we are, like we're coming from the Big Bang. Now, let's imagine that Big Bang, right? It happened billions of years ago. They assume it happened 14 billion years ago, about 14 billion years ago, on average, or 14.7. But let's imagine that Big Bang did happen, and let's imagine it's a past event, right? Now, if we look at it as a past event, and I say that the CD is consciousness, well, the CD is energy. When you put your laser on the CD and you play it, does it necessarily mean that what you played in the past is not still there? Or whatever level you are playing it at, does it mean that what you have in the future is not there? Can you relate? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that all that is, all the all that is, is already, already on the CD. But the only thing that hasn't been done yet is experiencing. Can you relate? What is on the CD, and that is what um, consciousness does. Consciousness, as we call it, is basically the observer. And consciousness is trying to observe, not trying, that would be a wrong term, is observing what energy is. They are the same thing, don't forget, but it's, it's like a self-reflection, looking in the mirror. And it's looking at what energy is. So, if anyone is to imagine time travel at any point, why don't you not possibly look at time as something that's in motion, like there's a past and a future. I, I believe people should, I believe if anyone wants to look at time travel seriously, they should look at time travel as present, as is. This is time. I'm, I'm going to give you, this is a perfect example. This is 90 minutes. It's captured. The only thing that makes this 90 minutes, 90 minutes, is whether you choose to experience this 90 minutes or not. The same works with the universe. It is already static. Uh, a lot of scientists will hate me saying this, but it is. But the only thing that's really in motion is consciousness working its way through this energy or this um what's this thing uh this um space of energy right and that is the so consciousness is the and i'll repeat again consciousness is the creation of time whereas energy is the creation of space 